Hey church family, it's me again. Good to see you. I have some good news for us and some announcements for this week that are very important for you to know for Sunday. Um, as probably most of you know, um, our county has gone into the next tier down, the red tier, uh, which means we can have up to 100 people inside of our sanctuary, 25% um, of capacity in a building. And uh, so we're going to be moving things. Last week we announced that we would be having two services. That's going to continue. Um, we will have two services, getting back to more of kind of a normal uh, church situation for us. Um, we also announced last week that we would be starting children's education uh, during the first hour. And we are going to continue that. And praise God, we got all of our teacher slots filled. So for those of you who st have stepped up and stepped into those roles, we appreciate that. Thank you for serving our children and ministering to them. Um, we will be starting to look at filling second hour teacher roles. Um, so be mindful of that. If you're interested in teaching or you have been a teacher and you're wanting to come back, we'll be looking to get second hour teachers for children's education set up as well. Um, but for us as a church, here's what our changes are now for this week. We had initially planned two services uh, last week, both services meeting just in the courtyard. What we're going to do now is not only move inside, but expand things. Uh, we're going to be able to try to, we're going to try to accommodate as many people as we can. So here's what it's going to look like. We are going to have up to 100 people in the sanctuary. Um, that will give us about 80 to 85 slots minus the people that are there serving for both services. So we will have that uh, room uh, filled with up to uh, almost 100 people. Um, the fellowship hall, we are also going to be opening up as a separate building. Uh, we can have 45 people in the fellowship hall that will be watching the service live on the screen up in front. Um, we will also be having uh, a courtyard uh, streaming service uh, available uh, during both hours for up to 40 people. Uh, we have even more pop-up tents. But here's the thing with uh, outdoor service. The guidelines from the state and uh, echoed by the county for being outdoors uh, right now are that if you are outdoors, uh, you do not need to wear a mask if you are uh, six feet distanced from other people. And so that's what we're going to do outside. The courtyard will be a no mask zone. Uh, so if you are inclined to not want to wear a mask as you come to church, we are going to have about 40 seats, 40 slots outside for uh, no mask people. Um, the way that's going to work is we're going to set up uh, two chairs here, then six feet, two chairs, six feet, two chairs, and then forwards and backwards will be six feet apart as well. Um, we're sitting them up in twos because a lot of us come to church in pairs, um, but if you're in a family of three or four or more, you can pull some of those twos together so that your, your family or your social bubble, you guys can be together in that sense. But what we're going to ask people in the courtyard to do is be sure and uh, for the sake of honoring the uh, the government, honoring their guidelines they've established, is to maintain those six feet um, six feet distance between uh, families and social bubbles uh, during the service time that we're out there, uh, just so that if people are walking by, they're they're acknowledging that Grace Bible Church is seeking to honor the government. That's a testimony from us to them. Doesn't mean that we agree. It just means that we are saying we are honoring, we are submitting to those uh, guidelines that, that, has, that have been set out for us right now. So I hope that all of that is exciting for you, that we'll have three areas where we will be able to accommodate between the two services, almost 300 people. And so we really hope that a lot of you will be excited to come back. Um, we know that some of you still will not be, not be able to or not comfortable doing that. That's completely fine. Um, we're, we understand that everybody is in different places in regards to this um, this whole response to the, the coronavirus. We understand that. Um, we're not trying to bind anybody's conscience, but we are wanting to be able to, administ to minister to as many 
uh, of you as we as we can here on the campus. So hopefully this is really good news for you. It's good news for us. It's a lot of work for me, but and everybody that's helping out with this. But we're excited for this week, and we hope that you are too. So here's what's going to happen as we move to indoors. Um, the registration link that you will be sent this week from the office will have actually a a registration for the sanctuary, a registration for the fellowship hall, and a registration for the courtyard. And that will be for each service. So there will be a total of six links actually. So when you go to register, please be very aware of which service you are wanting to register for and which area, sanctuary, fellowship hall, or courtyard. And remember courtyard is a no mask zone. Uh, so no mask requirements uh, for the fellowship hall and for uh, the sanctuary. We are asking that you uh, adhere to the guidelines by the state of wearing masks while indoors. So please do that. Um, we do want you to understand though, just uh, as would be just common sense and normal, if you're having trouble breathing, just lower your mask. If you're, you're singing and it's causing you difficulty, uh, just lower it down below your nose, whatever you need to be able to do to catch some breath while you're singing. Um, if you're, if you're having trouble at all, uh, even the state recommends if you're having trouble breathing, don't have your mask on. So just be mindful of, of those, um, those types of guidelines and instructions as well that are for your health and are just kind of common sense. So here's what we're going to do. One of the things that, that we're striving to do is to uh, continue to be uh, honoring to the government and things that they are saying. You guys have known this. We've been talking about this for a long time. And re remember, this is not a matter of just saying, well, the government said, so we better do. This is a matter of testimony to the Lord because God calls us to be submissive to the governing authorities. Remember, he established them. He put county officials into the positions they're in. He put governing um, uh, people into the positions in our state where they are. God has placed them there. God calls us to submit to them. Uh, unless they're calling us to sin, which they're not doing at this, this time, uh, our call is to submit to them. And so we're seeking to do that. And when we do that, please keep in mind, that is a way of us honoring the Lord, not just the emperor. But when we submit, as Jesus did, to a, a wicked government, as he, as he submitted, he pleased his father. We do the same thing as we submit, we please the Father. So keep that in mind and encourage you, some of you may need to be challenged with that thought a little bit because I know there's a, there's a lot of, not just amongst Christians, there's a lot of animosity towards the government right now. Um, that's probably normal for all the time, but right now this has really exacerbated that quite a bit. And as Christians, our desire should be first and foremost to do what is pleasing to God and let that be a testimony to others. So. Please keep that in mind as, as we move forward uh, with the opening up the church a little bit more. So here's one of the things that we're going to do that will be helpful for us, maintaining that good testimony and seeking to honor the emperor as we're honoring the Lord. Uh, what we're going to ask you to do, and this will be emailed to you as well, is we're going to have uh, different entry and exit points for the, the three different areas uh, that we are going to be having people. If you're registering for the courtyard and you're meeting in the courtyard, we just ask simply you come in through the two side gates on either side of the front of the courtyard building like you would normally. If you register for the fellowship hall, uh, we are going to ask that you enter through the fellowship hall lobby doors, uh, either one of those doors, or we'll have the side exit and entrance door uh, open so you can also entrance enter the, the fellowship hall through the side door if you want as well and for the sanctuary and this one gets a little bit tricky this is a little different um, what we'd encourage you to do is park in the the larger parking lot um, or or in that area and we're going to have you enter through the back sanctuary doors N normally those are exit only doors but we're going to ask that you go through the the back of our church in the playground area along that walkway and we'll have we'll have the two doors uh, propped open uh, so that you can enter through either one of those doors and come into the sanctuary through that direction one of the things we're trying to do is is just prevent a lot of clogging and clumping in in one big area so that those who are sensitive to social distancing will be able to do that uh, fairly easily 
and we'll be we'll be able to not have just a big one point of access where everybody's trying to go at one point at one time so what we're asking you to do again if you're in the sanctuary registered there enter through the back doors and exit through those same doors fellowship hall through the fellowship hall lobby or the side uh, the side door and the courtyard through the two side gates and again we'll email that information to you as well uh, we'll have some signs posted that will help you to remember that at each of those points we will also have the QR code posted for sermon notes if you want to uh, click on that and get your sermon notes that way uh, you can do that right at those entrance points or remember you can also just print out any sermon notes you want at home before you come to church and have those available to you um, at that time. So that's a, that's a lot. Hope you remember that. Uh, if not, you'll have an email that will follow you up or you can just, just play this back again and check it out. Um, for restroom access, um, for uh, basically that whole lobby of the, um, the church, uh, that will predominantly just be closed for uh, restroom access only. One of the things that uh, will be ha happening because of the courtyards, we'll have a lot of cables that will be uh, taped down to the carpet in that area. So we want to be cautious of um, too many people being in there and people maybe tripping and falling because of those things. Uh, but we also don't want that to be a point of uh, clumpage, a point of uh, people uh, gathering together and then people having a hard time getting around or, or whatnot. Um, especially these first weeks that we're back, that would be really easy to do. So we're asking that if you're in the fellowship hall, uh, if you need to use the restrooms, just go through the, the normal doors that you would, um, the side doors of the fellowship hall to access the restrooms. If you're in the sanctuary, just the back doors as normal. If you're in the courtyard, we'll have the two signs up like that we did last week uh, for uh, either accessing through the fellowship hall doors on the one side or accessing through um, the door by the stairs uh, for um, the other side of the courtyard access. So we're asking that you kind of keep the lobby uh, cleared out except for rest, uh, restroom access only. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind is that after each of our services, remember that there will be another service that will be arriving. Um, first hour people, you'll have to keep in mind that second hour people will be coming in in 45 minutes. Uh, second hour people, you'll need to keep in mind that soon after we're done, the Hispanic ministry will be coming in. And one of the things that we will need to do in between those services is just do a, a quick disinfecting wipe down of uh, the seats and door handles, things like that. Um, We'll probably need some of you to help with that. We're not going to uh, set up an official uh, you, 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 our disinfecting teams. We'll just start doing some disinfecting. And if you'd like to help us out, please do that. That would be wonderful. Um, but we will want to, at some point, uh, need to have everybody clear out of the uh, fellowship hall of the sanctuary and of the courtyard area so that those other service people can start coming in and filling in those those seats in those areas as they start arriving. So just be mindful of that. We're not going to um, uh, police you and tell you, you know, you must now leave the campus. Um, but just be mindful of that and be considerate of others, remembering that even with parking, you're going to need to move some cars out so they can move some cars in and things of that nature. So be mindful of others in regards to that. Um, also for CE, um, CE teachers, what we would ask that you would do, since you'll be serving during the first hour, is CE teachers, please register for second hour attendance. Just remember to do that so that um, you're not having to uh, miss out because you forgot to do that. So just a reminder to CE teachers who are serving first hour, remember to register for second hour. Um, also, for parents, uh, this will be something that will be new for you, uh, that we're going to be implementing a mobile check-in. Uh, the ability to check in your child or your children to your class from your phone. Uh, we'll be sending you information about that and where to get the app. Um, it's on the it's through the Shelby network um, and how to access the check-in from the Shelby app and then how to just walk through checking in your student. What that will do if if you do it correctly is that will print out their name tag and your label at the printer that's in your classroom. So all you have to do when you get to the classroom is grab your grab your stub, grab your uh, your child's name, and just put that on them. You won't have to check them in at the computer. That will save us from having a a clump of people at the computers 
waiting to sign kids in as well. So parents, please, as you get that, please read through that. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or, or uh, shoot us an email tomorrow and we can help clarify anything for you. But if you can utilize that, that will be helpful for us getting students checked in uh, more quickly. Uh, we'll keep that system even afterwards, after COVID's all done, um, just as a means of, of helping you guys get checked in early. And you can check in when you're, when you're you know, further away from, from the church. You don't have to wait till you get into the parking lot. Um, and also, I'd encourage you, uh, parents, uh, give yourselves a, a few extra minutes uh, just to, to do the check-in, get your kids situated, and get down to wherever you're going to be uh, seated for the service this week. So those are a couple things about CE. Um, lastly, I want to encourage you, remember that as we are seeking to, to be honoring to the government, to be submissive to them, remember that what we are doing is, is seeking to not only honor God as we do that, but another goal that we have is to be able to feed the flock, to be able to minister to people and to care for you. Um, that's, that's why we're trying to, to do as much as we can to get as many people back on campus as possible. Um, that's why we're going we're gonna to set up you know, TVs out in the courtyard and have, have the canopies out there. We've got a few new ones that are going to even improve the shade. So we've got some back walls that will help provide more shade for people that are sitting out in the courtyard, more coverage for that, especially in these hot days, that's gonna be really helpful. So we wanna be able to minister to you as best as we can and have as many people come back on campus as possible. So please keep that in mind. Um, also wanna want to give you a real strong encouragement as we come back together. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before and we've talked about this in different ways, different, different ones of us. Um, we understand that there are many different views that people have, not just out in the world, but people in our church have many different views and perspectives on what we should do, what we shouldn't do, how we should do it, how we shouldn't do it, um, who, what this ex expert says and what that expert says. Um, we understand that. And you need to understand that with each other as well. You need to be understanding that not everyone feels the way that you do. Not everyone thinks the same way that you do. Not everyone believes exactly what you do. And, and your job is not to convince the rest of the flock that your view is correct. Um, the only true expert is the Lord, and he hasn't given us a memo on what is right and wrong to do for COVID. So as you're reading your experts and somebody else is reading their experts, and there are experts on both sides of basically every issue. I've read enough of this to know that there are experts that will absolutely contradict another expert and who, who knows which expert is right. So your job when you come to church is not, it's not about you and it's not about your views on this whole COVID thing. The approach that, that I want to strongly encourage you to take as you come together for worship is to worship God. You're here for that purpose and you're here to build up one another in love and unity. Those are things that scripture calls us to. Scripture does not call us to get in fights over controversies, over issues. We're not called to do that. So don't come looking for that. Uh, don't come grumbling and complaining. Um, that's not our call. We're called not to do that, actually. So I wanna encourage you strongly, as you, as you come together on Sunday morning, as we come together as a church, be respectful, re respectful of others who hold a different view than you. Love others who have a different perspective than you do. It's not my job, it's not your job, it's not everybody else's job to conform everyone else to our perspectives. I have a perspective on all of this. I've been inundated with this for months. I have a perspective on it. But my job isn't to tell you what your perspective should be. My job isn't to tell you what you should think and how you should respond to this. My job as a pastor is to encourage you to worship the Lord, to love God, to love people, to not complain. That's my job. That's what scripture tells us to do. And so I want to, I want to encourage you to be very scriptural in your approach to this Sunday. Why are you coming here to worship the Lord, to fellowship with his people, to love and unify and build up one another. So let that be your, your perspective on coming here this Sunday and the following Sundays. Every Sunday really should be that way because we're going to have differences and I don't know that that will change. So it's not your job or my job to change everybody. That's not, our, that's not what we're here for. Our main purpose here is to glorify our Father who is in heaven and to please Him. 
That's what Jesus' goal was. In everything he did, he pleased the Father. Well, let that be your challenge this week. In everything you do, please the Father. Wherever you sit, sanctuary, fellowship hall, courtyard, please the Father. When you interact with people, please the Father. When you seek to submit to the state, please the Father. Let that be your goal. Let, let, the, let that be a challenge to you. I encourage you. Let me just read this to you from Philippians. A passage familiar probably to very many of you. Paul, as you know, he had gone through many difficulties. He'd seen many different things in his life. He'd, as, as he came to Christ, he was told the things he must suffer for the Lord. And we know that he suffered greatly. He went through many different types of trials. This is what he said in Philippians 4. He says, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Let that be something that you consider this Sunday. That in whatever situation you are in, learn to be content. He says, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. And that includes, I can wear a mask, and I can not wear a mask. It includes those things. I can worship outside, or in the fellowship hall, or in the sanctuary, and I can be content, and I can be thankful, and I can be worshipful. I just would encourage you to remember those who we pray for each month and, and we, we send out about each month who are living in persecuted nations, many of them all around the world, who don't have the freedoms that we do here. Be thankful for that. Be thankful for the freedoms. Praise God for those things. Even if we're limited with some of those things, learn to be content. This is not our home. This is not where we're landing. God has us here going through this for a reason, for a purpose, that you and I don't know what it is. But we can trust him that he knows what the reason is, what the purpose is, and we can walk through it together and be content because we have Christ, who is all we need. So think about those things. Be excited. I hope you're excited about coming back to church this Sunday. I hope that many of you will be able to, to make it. Watch for your emails. Please read your emails. It's very important, especially this week as we're getting back. Read your emails uh, about registration, uh, about instructions uh, that we'll have for Sunday morning. And just be encouraged that we're going to have almost 300 people on campus uh, this Sunday. And lastly, let me just ask you to keep praying that the numbers in our county keep dropping. Because if we get down into the next level down, the next tier, which is the um, uh, was the orange tier, we can have up to 200 people in our sanctuary, which between the two services gives us 400 people. So if we can get there in a, another two, three, four weeks, that would be wonderful. And we could probably accommodate almost everybody uh, inside the sanctuary. So pray for that. Uh, keep praying for that. Pray that our numbers keep dropping and they get low and they stay low um, because that's where the county is going to then just start opening things, opening things up even more. All right. That's all I have for you today. Be blessed. We'll see you Sunday. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.